Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever won a chess game in your life? That's not the actual question. There was more to it than that. Have you ever won a chess game in your life and then did a game review of that chess game and you won it like 95, 96, 97%? For a brief moment, you thought, am I going to get banned? Are they going to think that I'm cheating? Like you played a brilliant game. Imagine playing a 99% accurate game and beating the best chess player in the world. Yes, that happened today. Today was the grand finale of the first event of the Champions Chess Tour of 2024. And in the grand final, we had Ali Reza Faruja versus Magnus Carlsen, which is basically like the modern day Djokovic versus Alcaraz, let's say. All right, we have the young guy, Ali Reza Faruja, who once Magnus Carlsen appointed as the heir to the throne. Magnus said he would literally only play a world championship match if Ali Reza Faruja qualified to play against him. And now we're here. You know, we're here a few, uh, a few years later, and every time these two play, it's an absolute treat. It is the young, hungry lion, who is now 20, 21 years old, uh, versus uh, Magnus Carlsen, right? The incumbent, the best player in the world, 33, 34 years old, 33. And this is their match from today, and this was a banger of a match. I have six games to show you. Actually, uh, maybe I have more than that. I'm not going to ruin anything right now. Magnus opened this match with g3, all right? Slightly disrespectful move, but then it becomes a ready. Uh, it's just, it's not really disrespectful. It's just, you know, it's allowing the opponent to basically take any bit of the center that he wants. And when Ali Reza does this, Magnus plays knight f3, so now you, can, you, know, you can't put the e-pawn in the center. They're playing rapid, they're playing 10 second, uh, uh, ten minute with a 2 second bonus time. So we have a completely symmetrical position to begin with, and this opening is known as a, a Neo Grunfeld. Black plays a Neo Grunfeld, clearly the only imbalance is right here, and frequently white will actually take on d5, and basically say, look, I'm playing white, so it's an advantage for me to move first, and actually symmetry benefits the player who is moving first, because if you copycat, logically, if you copycat until the end, the person that gives checkmate will win, right? So, but Magnus plays this in a very provocative way. Magnus loves to give away this pawn completely and take the center. He has done this a lot. So basically he says, I get the center, you get this stuff over here. Now let's play chess. Queen e2, Ali Reza puts all his pawns forward on the queen side. Says, let's go. Put all the pawns forward, I'm ready, I'm gonna use the space behind the pawns, get my pieces out, etc. Magnus attacks the center of the board, because that's what his position is equipped to do. So he plays d5, very imbalanced game, white clearly has a slight advantage early, but here he does something very weird. He does not take the pawn back on d5 and try to put pressure, he plays e5. So he's now down two pawns, and Ali Reza counter-attacks his knight, and after pawn takes, he doesn't take the knight because then he would lose a bishop, he goes here. And when the dust settles, it is three pawns for a bishop. Ali Reza has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pawns. Magnus has one, two, three, four, four, five. Five pawns. And Ali Reza's got a lot of pawns here. Now, the major question is, are Ali Reza's pawns assets or liabilities, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. All look pretty strong, but these two are kind of standing alone. Is this pawn for Magnus? And asked that. By the way, how did this pawn cross three pawns? Isn't that ridiculous looking? How did the white pawn sneak past three pawns? Like, it doesn't even look real. Super weird position. So knight c6, queen b6. Magnus grabs this pawn, but he loses that one. All right, so they trade b pawns. Ali Reza now just puts pressure on the queen side by taking one step back. Look at this. Perfect example of life. One step back to take two steps forward. Sometimes you gotta go backwards in life to reset. Sometimes a failure or a struggle in life actually makes you a better person. Person, The biggest meme, some of you might have been through breakups, right? And it's very common, people go through breakups, they go to the gym, they start getting jacked. In my case, Lucy, you know, Lucy and I have been married now over two years. We still, um, you know, we still go to the gym together. So it doesn't matter, you can go to the gym by yourself, you can go to the gym with your spouse, you can go to the gym with your enemy, all right? You can go to the gym with your big inflatable balloon uh, uh, partner, it, wh wh whatever, whatever you guys are into. Bishop takes, king takes. Ali Reza still has these very powerful pawns, and here comes up with a very clever idea, f6. Giving Magnus this pawn, but that knight is hanging. But if Magnus comes back to defend the knight, Ali Reza takes the rook. Lost in all of this chaos is that when Ali Reza made that knight journey to d7, to c5, to b3, the rook is hanging. And Magnus decided that he was not going to play rook a2. He was going to just do this, take on e6, lose his knight, 
and take on d5. Sacrificing his rook completely. Completely. Just to take it. Can't take it. You take it, you lose probably. Rook d7, king h8. It's probably a mate here. I'll probably take the rook, play queen f7. Like, you're going to lose. Not when the rook takes back, right? So, rook a7, rook d1, rook e7. Ali Ross is defending himself. Rook d7, rook ff7. Unstoppable force. Immovable object. Take, take. They trade. King h6. But Magnus is just down a pawn. He's down a pawn, and while his king is a little bit, you know, while, while Alirisa's king is a little bit weak, look at this move, a3, and you cannot take with the queen because you would lose the defense of the bishop, and now, now Alirisa got a c-pawn, wait a minute, this is, this is a really scary position, check, queen c5, check, king h5, and the only move here for Magnus that he had to find was g4 check, he had to lose the pawn with check. The idea of losing the pawn with check is whatever way you take, there is a check waiting for you, and then it's going to end in a perpetual check. But Magnus Carlsen blunders and loses! He plays queen d7 and resigns because there's no way to get to the king, and there's no way to stop the pawn! Magnus loses! He loses game one with black, and Ali Reza played this game 41 moves at 99% accuracy. He played this opening, he grabbed the pawn, built up this big wall, sacrificed his knight. I think this is probably all some sort of opening theory. And then they just played this very imbalanced game where Black just said, you know what? I don't care that I'm down a piece. I have an impregnable fortress of pawns. What a game from Ali Reza, who takes down Magnus with a 99% win rate. So he's up one to nothing. Now game two, e4, Magnus goes for the true and tried, the Karo Khan. And here Ali Reza makes a huge mistake. He does not play the alien gambit, which... You know, he plays e5, and we enter the short variation. Magnus plays a5. I know this move, actually. Black is trying to just take some space. It's just a sideline. White plays a4, says you can't take space. And uh, then Magnus tries to break out of the center with the move f6. Ali Reza says, no, thank you. Knight e7. And now Ali Reza captures and puts the bishop on d3. And basically, he's saying, look, Magnus, you played this in a way that this is a backwards pawn. A backwards pawn is a pawn whose neighbors have advanced in front of it. And the square in front of it is controlled by the opponent. So that pawn, all the pawns advance. Nobody guards this, right, pawn-wise, and that square is controlled. But Magnus is going to very quickly develop his pieces, and the position is clearly in the balance. Take, take. Magnus goes for an attack. Ali Reza builds up some pressure against that e6 pawn. Magnus plays here. And Ali Reza makes Magnus make a difficult decision. Do you play queen f5 and just completely lose the pawn? Or do you do this, not lose the pawn, but we get a queen trade, and now my rook is pressuring all of your pawns. Normally, Magnus is doing this to other people. So now it's rooks, each, and knights. And the question is, will Magnus be able to defend himself, or will Ali Reza convert? Knight c1. Take a step back, two steps forward. Boom, boom. Right, go forward. Counterplay being created. Knight d3. Very interesting idea. In the interest of time, he volunteers the damaging of his own structure. Take, take, because now Magnus has no counterplay. Which is not a sentence like anybody says ever. Now, at this point, what Magnus had to do, if he wanted, he could have brought his king slowly, or he could have actually lashed out on the queen side, which is a really tough move to make, because then you make this a backwards pawn. You see, it's not a backwards pawn right now because it can move forward. But now it can't. So b5, right? Now, knight f6 goes back. Immediately, Ali Reza jumps forward. Take, take. Now Magnus tries to break out. Ali Reza grabs the pawn. Magnus creates counterplay by taking a pawn back, but now knight c6. And these pawns are very, very soft. They're very soft. Rook b7, he takes the pawn. And rook g7. So Ali Reza is still a pawn up. Probably it's still in the balance. Magnus looking to defend himself. Nice little trick, but here comes Ali Reza's king. b3. Rook e1. Oh, nice trick. If you take the knight, rook e4 check. King f5, though. Rook h7. Ali Reza is, is still up a pawn. He's, he's been basically trying to break away from the Magnus defenses for a long time. Uh-oh. Is there a mate? Knight e4 check. King g6. Is there a mate? King e8. Rook e7. Ooh. Black is looking really stuck. Rook d1, g4. And there, go, there goes Ali Reza. Knight e3. Oh my goodness. You're attacking the rook. You're attacking the pawn. What are you going to do? He plays rook b1. But now he's down two pawns. He's down two pawns and his knight is hanging. He plays knight c5. And that goes from bad to worse because knight c3 wins the game. This is hanging. That's hanging. There's nothing you can do. Oh my god. In the span of like five moves there, it went from bad to worse. Magnus is down two to nothing. He straight up just loses two games in a row. Ali Reza just showed up and this man is ready to scrap. So Magnus sits down for game three. He's down two nothing, right? Two nothing. It's a best of four. So it's two zero. But if he wins two games, we go to Armageddon. Okay. 
Plays of London, true and tried. Magnus just memeing around with all the openings. London, Karl Kahn. All right, knight d2, bishop d3, and we go for a stone wall. Bishop d3 is a slight move order trick, and uh, the point is that you don't develop your knight to f3 to try to play f4. This is actually in my d4 course, but it's a very known, you know, I'm not saying Magnus studied the... He might have, I don't, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's in the d4 dynamite course. If you don't have it already, you can get a free sample. I won't tell you how. Because you'll figure it out if you actually want to. F4, and now the idea is massive clamp on e5. So we have take, take, knight f3. And a very important move is for white to play this move a3. Because it stops anything from going to b4. Ali Reza plays a5. As you can see from the time spent by Magnus, he is clearly uh, very, very much in control. Rook c1, rook c8. And now Magnus plays a crazy move. Um, he plays g4. And the thing is, he has to win, right? So he has to take risk. So he plays g4. Now, some of you may be wondering, is that a free pawn? Yes, kind of. Knight takes g4, runs into a Greek gift. Greek gift sacrifice of the bishop, then knight g5, and then queen g4. But uh, there is no attack here whatsoever. Knight f5, queen h3, and the knight goes to h6. You're never checkmating black, ever. Now, would white play like king h1 and rook Probably, but knight takes g4 is just completely playable. And I don't know what Magnus would have done, by the way. I mean, would he have done this? Would he have tried to go for a position that looks, you know, more like this? I, I don't know. But Ali Reza doesn't take. Magnus has this effect on people, right? It's like two sets down Djokovic. Literally, by the way, because he's down two games, right? It's literally two sets down Djok uh, Djokovic. It's like, you beat him twice, and now, you know, this is the knockout right here. You take this pawn, you absorb the counterplay of Magnus, you win the game. But he doesn't. Instead, he puts the knight into the middle, but now, now, now knight g5, and now it's not so simple. And you know, with black, you might want to play a move like f5 here, which, by the way, even that would work. f5 is absolutely what Ali Reza should have played in this position, because he would have just been untouchable. The pawns would have just completely locked in the knight, but he doesn't play f5 either. He takes. Okay, now the bishop is completely open. Take, take, right? The more pieces you trade, the less chance you have of losing. Now, e5, you should probably break out, or maybe you should go for a rook trade. He plays knight c6, and now Magnus completely changes the tempo of the game. And he plays a wild move here. I mean, Magnus has been telling us for a while he wants to attack. He opened up his king, he took some massive risk, and then he goes here? What? <laughs> I thought we were going over there and stuff. Nope, nope. I want to enter and I want to attack you on the queen side. Like this. The position is still in the balance, but now watch this. Boom and boom. And we are in the black position. And we are going to make things very annoying. Rook queen d8, pawn takes d, uh, e5, and now this nice idea d4. Point of d4 is to play queen d5. Right, so it looks like I'm two pawns up. But I've got queen d5 ideas. Also, this ridiculous move, knight h4, apparently. After knight takes h4, queen takes d4. Anywhere the white king moves, there is a fork. For example, king g2, there is this. For example, king h1, there is queen d1. The king goes here, and then there's this. So, there's a lot of problems here. Magnus plays rook d6, and that's the key idea. Good knight takes. And despite having the wide open king, he's up a pawn. And not only is he up a pawn, he's up five minutes. And Ali Reza does his best, but this is a completely horrendous rook endgame to try to hold against the best endgame player who has ever lived. That's debatable, but rook d2, king e2, and you're just not gonna survive. There are way too many problems here. The computer is able to like find different ways to hold it, but yeah, not when you play Magnus. He gets your second pawn, he's just got two of those guys going, and uh, you just can't push. You can't push because the rook is defending everything. King's going to come here. It takes a few more moves. The pawns make it all the way down the board. And um, in this position, Firuja lost on time. If he had played b7, you would have promoted to a queen. And if rook h8, you can win in a variety of ways. You can stop the pawn by playing rook c7, g2, and this. That probably also wins. But uh, there's many ways to win. So Magnus just comes back. Okay. Out of nowhere. So, there we go. 
There we go. Two to one. Which sets us up for this game. Magnus down two sets. E4. C5. Knight F3, D6. Magnus has to win this game. D4, CD, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, and like this. H5. So, idea here is black wants to play bishop h6. He is creating this kind of weird anti-kingside pawnstorm setup. And this is the kind of Sicilian defense that you try to play if you're trying to beat somebody. There's another idea here to play knight takes d4 and then put the bishop out that way. It's a very, very weird setup. You play like h5 and so on. It's like, a, I don't know, it's like a very weird Sicilian. Ali Reza just, you know, plays in the center. Now we see the idea, bishop h6, take here, 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 rook c8, everything is good. And Magnus plays queen a5. Now, a lot of this has actually been played before, this kind of report dragon, named after the Hungarian now playing for Romanian grandmaster, uh, Richard Report. Queen c5, rook e1, and Magnus, in this position, after building up tension for a while, blunders something pretty bad. He was very unhappy with himself. He plays b5, and his idea was, like, you know, to attack, obviously, but, uh, just this. And one guy has just more attacking firepower. He has two rooks in the game, and Magnus only has one. And so Magnus has to trade the queens. He plays a6. We settle on a few more exchanges, but Ali Reza is not losing this position. And remember that Magnus has to win this position, which, which funnily enough, he actually gets some decent chances in this game. Like... He advances his pawns, and if we trade the rooks and the king gets there, you know, like, it's gonna be, but it, that doesn't happen. F5, and uh, after bishop e2, Ali Reza offers a draw, and the pawn can't actually be protected. So, Magnus, in this position, uh, accepts the draw, and Ali Reza wins. He beats Magnus in the grand final of the Chessable Masters. However, it is a double elimination. So, this is Magnus's first loss. And Ali Reza emerged as the winner of the loser's bracket. So we go to a grand final reset, which is new for chess. We generally don't do double elimination. So when the first time I heard of these terms, like grand final reset, I was like, what is that? I felt like an 80-year-old trying to use like an Android. Um, no disrespect if you're watching this and you're 70 or 80. It's just a stereotype about older folks. I'm just, I'm just, listen, there's stereotypes about younger folks too. There's stereotypes about you know, all sorts of people. Anyway, point is... Um, so on a serious note, like, I have people come up to me on the street or, like, at fan events or something like that. Folks are well into their 70s and 80s, and it is pretty cool. Sometimes people comment, like, I'm 68. I haven't played chess for 50 years. I got back into it because of your videos. Chess is fascinating. It's not like a lot of this other YouTube stuff, which is, like, only for 12-year-olds, and it's, like, memes and oiling you up and stuff. Anyway, with all that out of the way, now that we had a little heart-to-heart -heart there with the adults who are watching this video and not all the kids that are commenting and upvoting all each other's comments to the top. This is the grand final reset. It's a best of two. If it's tied one-to-one, -one, we play Armageddon. Magnus this time moves his bishop a square further. You will remember there was a game. He moved the bishop over here. Now he moves the bishop one square further. This is my favorite opening. D5. And here, personally, sometimes I like to take and damage the structure. But I know that by playing this move, Black is saying, I want that, so go ahead. So sometimes I don't even do it. And what's interesting about this position, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, excuse me, it's a pretty similar structure, right? The, the major difference is that Black hasn't played e6, and the bishop is on f4. So in this position, the bishop is on f4, and Black just played e6, right? Major difference, that's it. It's just the positioning of the bishop. And here the bishop is a little bit more confrontational. Take, take, and Ali Reza plays h6. Basically begging to be taken. Like, go ahead, Magnus, give up your dark squared bishop, give me the bishop pair. Magnus says no, and by saying no, the game just sort of becomes like an exchange Karo Khan. And you might be like, what are you talking about? Well, white doesn't have an e-pawn, and black doesn't have a c-pawn, so basically, this position could have technically arisen out of e4, c6, d4, d5, take, take, c3, knight, c6, 
and something like knight f3, bishop f5, bishop e2, knight f6, bishop g5, right? Like, technically, we could have got the exact same looking position. Look, this is the position in the analysis board. And this is the position, right? This is the exact same position. It's just the last move is highlighted differently. Look at that. Isn't that magic? That's magic. Doink. Doink. Wow. So it's an exchange Karo Khan with slightly weird piece positioning. And Ali Reza just goes, you know what? H5. I'm attacking. And then a couple moves later, he castles queenside. Gloves are off. It's a hockey fight. I love that in hockey. It's like, a, it's like such a gentlemanly thing. They just, they, 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 they decide before the fight that they're going to fight. It's very rare. They just like, throw, they're like, are you trying to fight? All right, let's fight. It's great. I love it. It's beautiful. It's like you want to step outside, except they're in the rink. It's on the rink. In their skates. Amazing. Now, what do you do when the kings are on opposite sides? Easy. Boink, boink. B4, A4. You don't even think about it. It's just, you got to send a warning shot. You got to one pop to the stomach, you know? Remember Charlie Horsing used to punch each other in the leg or like the arm? It's like, ah, same thing. B4, A4. Ali Reza, F6, G5. Sending the warning shot right back to Magnus. Both guys attacking each other. Now, clearly from a comfortability standpoint, one guy has four minutes more than the other. So Ali Reza's really struggling to figure out the best way to go forward with the attack. The computer really liked him setting this up first, and the computer actually really liked him playing E5, which is a weird move, because if you play E5, you're not playing G5. So it wanted him to take a center-based approach. Approach, not approach. So he doesn't do that. He does this, and then he starts building up like this, but now, now we have a problem. And the problem is, you know when the guy that's getting attacked on the side of a board plays a move on the side of the board where he's getting attacked, say that five times fast? Yeah, you know this is an issue. Because there's not enough. You can play H4, you can sack the knight, but there's no mate. I mean, it looks like there's a mate, there's no mate. There's no mate. Knight takes, pawn, like, there's no mate. It looks like you're getting mate. There's no mate. You just can't, there's no checkmate. So, he has to go back, and that's... That's bad, because now, now, now there is no more going forward. There is no going forward. Ali Reza tries to reroute and create a defense, but now it is all Magnus. It's like when you, when you have an onslaught, and then you stop them, and then you fumble on the goal line like the Ravens. A6, B6, Knight to E3, all the like 400 Baltimore fans that are watching this right now just lost their minds. Queen d7, and Magnus ends this game like a man who knows that he's gonna be in a Gotham YouTube video for the 800th time. Magnus takes the pawn on d5, defending his rook. Ali Rezov plays knight e4, cutting the communication between the rooks. If you take the knight, you're gonna lose the rook, but also the knight is hanging. But the best way to end this game, the best way to end this game is to sacrifice the rook! Rook takes b6! Because you know you're going to lose it anyway. So you take it with a check. And the point is that now my pawn is there. That is the secret to attacking chess. It's not just pawn, 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 break everything down. When white is going on this attack with a5, a6, he's preparing for the endgame. The options are black takes and opens the king, or black does this. And then knight takes d5, rook takes b6. F takes e4, he gets the knight back, the pawn on a6 is walking up the board, and, uh, it's bad news. King a7, b5, Magnus locks it down. And now it's just about, can we get in? Knight b4, knight c6, takes, he just keeps going, queen a5, and the knight gets in. And now we simplify down, and it's just a winning endgame. Knight to f5, d5, two connected pass pawns. There we go. Now, black could defend a little bit better. Look at that move, though. I mean, dear lord. Sacrificing the rook with this coming. e78. What a beautiful sacrifice. You can't take it. But the rooks are too strong. Uh, the pawns are too strong. And uh, he's just making a queen. d8. And in this position, Ferruja resigned. So Ferruja from 2-0 to winning that match to losing this first game in a complex back-and-forth battle now has to win with white. If you're going to kill a game, you got to play e4, e5. You got to play e4, e5. I will remind you, in this game, he played the Karo Khan, and in this game, he played the Sicilian. But in both of those games, he needed to win. He wanted to bounce back very quickly. He didn't want to stabilize. And now he wanted to win with the Sicilian, how are you going to get, beat Magnus Carlsen in a symmetrical King's Pawn game? 
Well, we go for an Italian. Then we play a provocative Italian with bishop g5. This is called a provocative Italian because, it, because he gets in your face and says, Hey, what are you doing? h6, bishop to h4, bishop e7. It's provocative because you're supposed to go g5. That's what you're supposed to do. Magnus says, you know, I'm not doing all that. Like, that's the point. He wants me to play his... I'm not going to play his game. D6, you want space? You're not getting space. Beat me. Castles, castles. G6. The idea of G6 is to put the rook there and to reroute the bishop to G7 because it's kind of a clown here. It's not doing anything. And it's a close position, so that's exactly what Magnus does. All right? He plays G6. He plays rook E8. He plays bishop A, bishop G7. He has time. He has time. He has a little bit of downtime on vacation. He fixes up a few things around the house. Here comes uh, Ferruja. Now, the top engine move here is still to kick out the bishop. Max is like, no, I'm not going to do I'm not going to weaken my king. C3. Now I'm going to weaken my king. Take, take. Now I'm ready. Because if this, now I take the bishop, I come here and I can play a 5 of 4 and, and yeah, you're never, you're never getting out. So Ferruja now has to take... And white is slightly better. Absolutely white is slightly better. But rook b8. Black's position is quite easy to play. Queen c2. Magnus puts that out on f4. With a simple idea. If takes... Actually, black could take with either. You could maybe try to create an attack. Or you can just open up the bishop. Which I gotta tell you. I mean, dear lord, that looks powerful. I mean, my god. So, d4. Queen f6. Take, take. Knight d2. Queen e6. b3. Magnus brings the bishop back around. Ferruja's time is ticking. But he plays knight c4, and now it's a question of, wait a minute. Why did Magnus play like, what about his pawns? He's gonna lose. He's gonna lose. Gives up the pawn. Wow, Ali Raz has made a comeback. It's unbelievable. What a match. He's gonna win this game and force an Armageddon. G4 though, Magnus is not so fast, I'm creating counterplay. If you take, I have mating ideas. H4. It's a weird move, but basically I'm just not opening the G file. Knight h5. The idea of knight h5 is to mummify your bishop and play on this diagonal. So Ali Reza has to play king h1. But now Magnus plays queen f6. He's threatening the f2 pawn. He's threatening the pawn on h4. So we go here. We give up our bishop, but we protect our king. Now Magnus plays queen f2. Oh my goodness. You can take and take, but you can't protect the rook and the pawn at the same time. Now, the best move in this position is to put the rook on the file and play b4. But Ali Reza plays this with a very simple idea. Overprotect your pawn to enable knight c6. Now, the most natural move here is bishop g3. Then knight c6, then rook b6. Uh, that would be nice. Then rook b6, knight b4, maybe bishop h4. And white just pushes and hopes for the best. But here Magnus plays this move f5. Down a pawn already, he gives up another one because he just wants the e-pawn. Time is of the essence, and he needs Ferruja to, in his mind, reprogram. Now, Ferruja thinks, he's thinking, he's thinking, he can take this pawn, he can take this pawn, or he be begin pushing b4. He plays b4. But now rook d8! Magnus doesn't even take! He's leaving the pawn here, or maybe he's gonna push it in like this! Now Ali Reza takes, and apparently, what you had to do... When F, you had to play this first to prevent the rook's infiltration. That's what you needed to play. Magnus making it really difficult. Rook d6. Ali Reza plays b5, but now the pawn takes. It didn't matter. You could have taken. I still would have made a pass pawn, so now I took. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And here, something insane happens. Ali Reza in this position can take a pawn with check. But why would you take if the king is getting closer? Well, then after rook e4, if black plays rook d2, you have rook f1, and the king is sort of stuck. King's, like, out in the open. And you say, well, Levy, that's easy, just king h7. I understand. Rook d2, all of this, I still play rook f1. But what about e2? Yeah, but then I can take the bishop. And if you take me, like, if you play something like rook f8, I have this. Point is, the king is gone. But Ali Reza didn't quite get that detail, and he just went here right away. But here's the problem. With the king here, where it's standing right now on g8, when the rook goes to f8, it's protected. So rook d2, rook f1, rook f8, you lose. Because if you take now king h7 and you're not back in time, e2, 
The major difference was that if instead of there, you played rook takes g4 check, if in this position you went here, the king deflected somewhere it didn't want to be. It either went here into the line of f1 or here where it did not defend the rook. King h8, rook e4, rook d2, rook f1, rook f8. The king is not defending the rook, so you have this. But what happens in the game is not that. What happens in the game is this. And now you are defended. And Faruja loses. Because rook f2, rook f2, and the queen is coming on the next move, and the game is over. Faruja puts up a massive fight against Magnus, even beating him with a 99% accuracy, but a massive comeback. Two sets down, Magnus Carlsen comes back and wins it in the grand final reset. Listen, it's always fun. Six games between these two. Oh my goodness. Just an absolute blast. Five decisive games out of six. What more can you ask for? That's all I have for you today. Get out of here.